welcome everyone who is joining us uh, for this service of memorial. Uh, I would just encourage those who are coming into uh, the Zoom meeting to keep your videos off. And uh, you should be able to see the slides on the screen uh, so that you can follow along with the words of the prayers and uh, the words which will be shared of, of um, songs that we're going to sing today. So a particularly warm welcome to those uh, from Inga's family and a um, special welcome to uh, Rick, her nephew, and to Helga, uh, Inga's sister, who is joining us from Birmingham. Uh, we have a number of guests who are coming in on the phone and the team will be renaming those numbers so that we can see who is in the room very shortly. I'd also like to welcome all of uh, Inga's uh, godchildren who have been sent a link today and who are joining us uh, in Zoom. So welcome to you all. This is a particularly strange way of doing a Thanksgiving a memorial service. Uh, but it's very important that we have this time together today to remember our dear sister Inga. As many of you know, I conducted the uh, short service at the crematorium at 12 o'clock today. Uh, it was a very strange uh, thing to be doing uh, alone uh, in the chapel there, but I'm glad that technology has made it possible for us to be able to share that service now. And so um, after uh, an opening prayer, uh, we will actually watch the very short video of the committal service, uh, and then we will sing a hymn. So let's um, bow our heads where we are as we pray. Heavenly Father, you have made us not for darkness and death, but for life with you forever. As we remember our dear sister Inga, look with compassion on us in our loss. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. I'm Reverend Sally Bailey, and it is my honour and privilege to be here at Breakspear Crematorium today for the committal service of our dear sister, Inga Plitzka. Let us pray. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Inga requested a reading from Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, 
he saved me. Return your soul, return to rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. A prayer of thanksgiving. God of mercy, Lord of life, you made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Inga, for the grace and mercy she received from you, for all that is good that was good in her life, and for the memories we treasure today. We especially thank you for her faithful service at St Margaret's Church Edgware for over 50 years, for her thirst for the gospel and her willingness to share it, for her hospitality and friendship to me. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now I commend Inga to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident in his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Inga to your mercy. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, who is dead, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great goodness. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone and its place will know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever and ever towards those that fear him and his righteousness upon their children's children. We have entrusted our dear sister Inga to God's mercy, and now we commit her body to be cremated. Earth to earth ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes. The busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. And so we stand wherever we are to sing, There is a Redeemer.
As we spend time calling to mind our memories of Inga through the tributes paid to her today and in the quiet reflections, we know that amongst the memories of joy and thankfulness, there may also be some hard memories, times when perhaps we feel we let her down or times when maybe she failed us. And so at the start of this service, let's offer to God any difficult memories and hear the words of forgiveness. Forgiving God. In the face of death, we discover how many things are still undone. How much might have been done otherwise. Redeem our failures. Bind up the wounds of past mistakes. Transform our guilt to active love and by your forgiveness, make us whole. Amen. God, our Redeemer, you love all that you have made. You are merciful beyond our deserving. Pardon your servant's sins, acknowledged or unperceived. Help us also to forgive as we pray to be forgiven through him who on the cross asked forgiveness for those who wounded him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you to the many people who have sent contributions for the tribute today. And so I'm going to start by sharing a few facts about Inga's life, uh, things that she shared with me in her very organized way when we sat down to have the funeral planning meeting uh, last year. And then I'm going to um, invite other people to share who have um, agreed to give contributions uh, on the live Zoom meeting. And then I'm also going to share an article which Inga wrote uh, to answer the question of how and why she became a Christian. So Inga was born on the 21st of January 1930 in Vienna, Austria, to her parents, uh, Hurt. Herta and Willibald Plitzka, who were of Czech nationality. Inga had one sister, Helga, who was older than her by a couple of years. They moved to Bratislava, which is now part of uh, Slovakia, where her father worked in the 1930s during the Great Depression. Her grandfather had died before Hitler took power but she lost her grandmother to a concentration camp. She talks of having a difficult time at school when children found out that she was half Jewish. And as Hitler's presence was felt, other Jewish children disappeared. But Inga had been baptized. And in 1939, her parents sent her to the UK with the Barbican mission to the Jews, which is now merged with Christian witness to Israel. And so she and her sister Helga arrived and she spent four very happy years living in a Christian children's home for Jewish youngsters. Inga and Helga were reunited with their parents and lived together in West Kilburn. Inga left school at 16 with a school certificate and she worked in the accounts departments of an insurance company a small independent company which eventually became part of Norwich Union, 
which is now part of Aviva. She told me how when she started work, she was afraid of the telephone. And so that was the first thing she had to learn was how to use the telephone and not be afraid of it. And she also um, loved figures and accounting. As we know, Inga never married, but devoted herself to friendships. And she was a prolific letter writer and sending cards, as we shall hear from others later. Inga's mother died in the early 1960s and uh, her father died in 1969. Inga went to St. Luke's Church in West Kilburn for about 20 years before moving to Edgware in 1970, buying her bungalow after finding St. Margaret's Church. She told me that she'd attended a wedding at St. Margaret's and had heard a good sermon on revival, so she thought that was the church she should join. She also knew the Huff family who had moved to Edgware. Inga also told me about the 9th of November 1984, a date engraved on her mind because that was the day she, rece she received healing from a heart condition as the result of prayer from ladies at a full gospel church meeting. And Psalm 116 was the scripture that uh, she remembered from that time, which meant a lot to her, which is why I read that scripture at the crematorium early today. Inga retired in 1985 at 55 years old. She explained to me that in those days, ladies retired at 55 years and gentlemen had their smoking room. Good job we don't retire at 55 now, otherwise um, that would be it for me. For Inga, her faith was central to everything she did. She loved writing, and so writing became part of her ministry to the church. Writing in the parish magazine, first at St. Luke's and then at St. Margaret's. 40 years of writing articles every month in the Good News in Edgware. And her article on the back page was called Thinking Aloud. But I heard that Inga was so humble that she didn't even want to sign her name to her articles until persuaded to just put IP on the end. Inga was church warden at St. Margaret's from 1990 to 1996 during Gordon Bennett's time and through the interregnum when he left. She was involved in interviewing Colin Bedford with Tony Peacock, who was also church warden at that time. I can just imagine Inga and Tony having a good chat about that now that they are both reunited in heaven. Inga was treasurer of St. Margaret's for a time, a task that she'd taken over from Daisy Lye in 1996. Uh, uh, and she then passed this task on to Sylvia and confessed to me that she didn't really like doing church finance. I always remember Inga as being determined, being fiercely independent, but with a great sense of humor. She was a very loyal friend, particularly as she regularly visited Eddie Graham in prison. I'm now going to invite Jenny Storer to share her thoughts and memories of Inga. Thank you, Jenny. Over 40 years ago, Inga came over to speak with Roger and myself when we visited St. Margaret's. Having recently moved and married, married and moved into the area, I have always thought of her as a welcomer, making certain that she spoke to whoever appeared in the church, gently encouraging them to stay for coffee, cake and the service. I know there are many who recognised and are thankful for that ministry of hers. During the 80s and 90s, and I'm obviously not sure of the dates, she was active in official roles as treasurer. Not an easy task for anyone. And the church warden, as church warden also, with responsibilities for the fabric and upkeep of the buildings, among other things. She carried out these tasks faithfully over several years. Inga was a great communicator, especially using her pen. 
her monthly Thinking Aloud column, giving scriptural insights on contemporary issues and situations in the parish magazine over many years was very much appreciated and sorely missed when the magazine ceased publication. She edited and sorted copy for the magazine, requesting contributions to inform others of our activities, joys and sorrows. She was also a writer of letters to individuals within and out of the church, family and friends, giving counsel and encouragement. Messages in Christmas and birthday cards were personal to each one. Inga's great joy was her garden, which she tended so beautifully. The view from her bungalow window of the trees is so lovely, calming and ever changing with times of day and season. She used it to provide hospitality and garden parties, making people welcome, delighting us with her delicious apple cake. She was a lovely hostess for our life group in recent months, enabling us to share the garden with her. Inga loved God and Jesus her saviour and was always keen to share her knowledge and love for him with others. Her Bible was well thumbed and she demonstrated her knowledge through insightful comments and references. Inga and I share the same birthday month, January. And I know she loved snowdrops, first flowers to appear following the darkness of winter. Having known our three children, Rebecca, Hannah and David from birth, she was always interested in their progress and doings and liked to hear about the four grandchildren. All three of our children were saddened to hear of her death. It has been a privilege recently to assist her with her appointments and to visit her in hospital and the bushy care home. She continued to manage her affairs and people throughout this time. She wanted, I know, to return to her bungalow, but said more than once, if that was not to be, and if her heart failed, it was a win-win situation. She is in heaven now, at rest, at peace, able to freely worship the friend and companion of her life, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny. I'm now going to share some contributions from Barry Morris Morrison, who was a former curate uh, between 1972 and 76. <clears throat> so Barry writes, Inga was already a full and faithful member of St. Margaret's when I arrived as curate in 1972, over 48 years ago, hard to believe. She had been the most exceptional, steady, sturdy, faithful, thoughtful Christian, giving informed and prayerful support to the clergy and all leaders, members, and activities. Inga came to the church and Christian fellowship to learn, pray and grow, not to criticize or complain. All this through many inevitable ups and downs in the life of St. Margaret's. Preaching and teaching were very important to her. She was both appreciative and discerning. I remember introducing a sermon on the call of God's servant on Isaiah 49, 1-9, with illustrations of job offers and expectations in today's world by way of contrast with the call to obey, endure, and witness. Inga would have preferred getting straight to the word uh, to know what God had to say. It also had to have a spark of life now and of the presence and reality of the Holy Spirit at work in our hearts and lives and in his world. Inga was one of those quiet, self-effacing, totally reliable members whom leaders can easily begin to take for granted 
so sorry on behalf of all of us. She was a special example of still waters, concealing real depth. As editor of Edgware News, she referred to her own contributions as my scribbles. When they showed real perception, usually including particular helpful quotes from scripture and Christian writers of stature and quality. She aimed to cover a good range of God's mission at home and overseas. It was only much later that I learned of Inga's background and what she and her family had suffered. Over all the years of hearing from her, usually just at Christmas, her attitude was always positive and hopeful, wonderfully free of any bitterness or resentment. She knew God's forgiveness deep in her being and her overriding concern was that others too should come to know God's love for them through Jesus Christ, as she did. It has been heartwarming just to remember her. Sad that she is no longer with us, but in a far better place and still a shining light for all who remember her. Thank you very much, Barry, for those thoughts. I also have some words uh, from Barry Dawes, uh, who is uh, a local friend of Inga's. So Barry writes, I would like to thank God for the life of my dear friend Inga. It was a blessing and a privilege to have known Inga and Rupert and I have wonderful memories with her. She was Christ-centered, loved everyone and was a true servant of God. She always put Jesus first in her life, and she will be greatly missed by all. Inga was indeed a special person, full of the Holy Spirit, and always had the light of Jesus on her face. I remember those many occasions when we used to visit Eddie with Kostarkis, and those times were such a blessing to me. She always thought of others before herself. A few weeks ago, Rupert and I visited Inga in a care home in Bushy. It was a special time for the three of us together as we laughed and had wonderful conversations. I will always remember her lovely smile. Although we miss Inga greatly, she is now with Jesus. And so Rupert and I would like to thank God for bringing Inga into our lives. Amen. Thank you very much, Barry Dawes. Stuart Cawthorn, uh, who is a member of St. Lawrence, um, just the other side of Edgware, uh, uh, sent a letter to um, Rick Cooper, Inga's nephew, and he very kindly let me have a copy, and I thought it was appropriate uh, that I share this with all of you, I hope, uh, and I'm sure Rick won't mind. So Stuart writes, um, I participated in St. Margaret's home groups and joined Inga's group about three years ago. Over the last six months, as Inga's health has deteriorated, we developed a close bond as I would pop in to spend some time with her or latterly to visit her in hospital or the care home. I shall miss her greatly. Inga was an inspiration, kind, thoughtful, interested in people, she set the bar high in terms of her behavior towards others. When she expressed an opinion, you sat up and took notice because you knew that this was the product of serious reflection. It was abundantly clear that her Christian faith was central to her life. She would say to me, it all makes sense. And she was great company. I looked forward to visiting her because we would have such fun swapping stories about the past. There were serious things to discuss, but between the seriousness, lots of laughs. I was struck by Inga's practical and common sense approach to life's challenges, and this was very much in evidence over the last few months. I imagine these characteristics must explain the wonderful garden that she has created behind the bungalow. I was astonished when she told me that she knew very little about gardening when she moved to Edgware. Yet here was what to my eyes looked like a show garden. 
The last time I saw Inga was at the Beaumont care home. I found her sitting in the lobby, busy writing. She was delighted to see me and gave me the most marvellous welcome. I pray that Inga has now received the most marvellous welcome into the Lord's heavenly kingdom. So thank you very much, Stuart, for sharing those thoughts with us. I would now like to invite the uh, Reverend Mike Clark, who was the former rector of Edgware Parish, uh, to share his tribute uh, uh, in the Zoom meeting. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Sally. Well, uh, what uh, struck you first about Inga was her devotion to Jesus. Lois and I remember her arriving early for prayer meetings close behind Jenny Carter, wheelchair and all. Both are now enjoying their well-earned reward. And thank you, all you house group members who gave her such loyal support. Jenny, Catherine, Betty, Richard, Stuart, Barry, Ken, and friends such as Margaret and Cosacris and others. Through you, she was able to carry on when the going got tough. There was always something naive and little girlish about Inga's tr trustfulness. She was physically frail and handicapped, of course. To follow her words cost patience and effort. Inga was always a personal challenge. Every conversation like a litmus test to show how godly or not, how selfless or not we were, forced to stop whatever we were doing to work out what it was that she was trying to say. But it was never wasted effort. Inga, like the rest of us, was no saint. She had her little spats and grievances, her favourites and those she found hard to get along with. She put up with a lot of slights and put downs, but didn't show it. She had moments of great happiness. Those annual garden parties that she presided over like royalty, looking down on all the tables circled by guests. And of course, there was her personal attachment to Eddie, questioned by some, but platonic and sweet to others. Her visits to HMP Little Hay and all those handwritten letters meant the world to her. She had a distinctively Austrian appetite for titbits and pastries. When Inga first appears in that Czech film documenting her escape from the Holocaust, you see her tottering towards the camera, holding out a piece of apple cake and proudly saying that it's her own recipe. Inga was the only Barbican kinder transport victim to stay in touch with the Jewish mission that saved her life. And in that respect, she was like the one leper in the Bible who turns back to Jesus to give thanks. When I first learned about Inga's documentary, I planned to turn it into an MPEG file and show it as a video. I'd hoped to invite our neighbors in Exeter to an evangelistic event where they could meet Inga and watch her film. But I wasted time trying to paste on the subtitles, and by then it was too late. Inga was already too frail to make the journey to anywhere except heaven. Inga always relished just being there at the heart of whatever was going on at St. Margaret's, however incongruous she might look. She took part in the healing on the streets that we started with Topi. When I launched that somewhat off the wall activity called Move of the Spirit, a not very Anglican experiment in the sacred dance, flag waving and free movement. Inga was right there in the midst, enjoying all the fun and games. Inga was such an unusual person. She defied traditional norms of church that many people didn't notice her at all, but she never took it to heart. And even those of us that thought we knew her well got our comeuppance from the film. 
the film opened our eyes to so much tragedy, glory, personal drama, divine grace in Inga's life that we'd never known existed. It was a privilege to know her. And one day, maybe, when Lois and I get to heaven, we'll be allowed to glimpse Inga Plitzka somewhere up there with Jesus, far, far, far above our heads. So thank you, Inga, for making our lives so much richer. Thank you, Sally, back to you. Thank you very much, Mike. And so I'm going to share a few words now from uh, some of those friends from the Life Group. Uh, first from uh, Catherine Tasker. Catherine writes, Inga was a kind and supportive friend to so many people over the years. She placed great importance on keeping in touch with her friends and was a prolific writer of letters. She was also one of the most hospitable people I have ever known. She loved her bungalow and enjoyed inviting friends for meals or to stay with her. She was also a most welcoming host to our home group on Fridays. Inga was absolutely committed to St. Margaret's and served faithfully in many roles over the years. She had such a strong Christian faith, which she always was always happy to share with others, and she will be remembered with great affection by her many friends. Thank you, Catherine. And from Betty Bickley. Betty writes, Inga and I had a great friendship. Yes, we could get heated with each other, but as one said, one friend said, it showed we were sisters. We both found that helpful. I first began to get to know her when we took ages to paste up the parish magazine way back in the 80s. Later, we developed a great friendship. I recall her saying she must contribute to the petrol when we went out together. But my reply to her was, Inga, you drink my petrol, I eat your food. This brings me to uh, my great memories of her hospitality and her get together for church tea in her beautiful garden. She was also the house group leader for many years and we had many great Christmases together. We shared a few, each giving each other company. Inga was great fun to be with and we often played table games. Reversible was one of her favorites. What a laugh we had. But more than any of these, Inga was a great person of prayer and also had a letter writing ministry. And the years she spent as editor of um, the parish pump, maybe the Edgware News, her writings each month were very spiritual. She had the back page and gave willingly of her insights to the Bible so that we could all grow spiritually. I value the years I had her friendship and spiritual support. Thank you, Inga, from Betty. I also uh, received some thoughts from uh, Richard Bolton. Uh, Richard wrote, I'm not sure how Inga would feel about the present arrangements for this service, but we all know that she was quite capable of being philosophical and seeing humour where there wasn't much. All would say, I'm sure, she was a lovely lady, very considerate and helpful, great hospitality, a wonderful level of faith, very likeable, courageous in serving the Lord and following scripture, industrious for the Lord, as shown by doing healing on the streets in all weathers, long after she should have stopped on age grounds, and her contributions to the parish magazine. She was a member of CCJ and a great friend of Simon Schaefer of Messrs Moran, a fellow member, and really good friend and support to members of the parish, to a member of her parish, um, Eddie, who is in prison. She loved her home and was well thought of by her neighbours. In relation to 1939, her mother had the foresight to see what was happening and had found out about the Barbican mission to the Jews in Chislehurst, Kent, uh, which Richard believes was operated by Reverend I.E. Davidson. 
uh, who had organized four flights to carry Jewish children to England, the fourth of which did not get away. And it was there that Inga learned about the Lord and realized that she could not have a relationship with him unless she repented and came to faith. I believe she was about eight years old at the time. There is so much more that could be said, but at this time, all we can do is say our love and prayers to the family. That's from Richard and Laura Bolton. And I do have a, a few remarks from uh, Kostakis as well. Inga had a passion for Christ. I remember preaching once for the New Year's Eve service late into the evening with an interactive quiz as part of the preaching slot to keep people alert and awake. Inga was hot on the case after the service, commenting that it was light on gospel message. This had a profound impact on me. Her enthusiasm for the gospel was demonstrated on many other occasions. She frequently wanted a copy of the sermons to pass on to Eddie. Inga was an accomplished pastoral visitor, venturing all over the parish to visit the housebound, often accompanying, accompanied with myself, Betty or Jenny or someone else. She particularly enjoyed our communion visits to the outskirts of the world in Boreham Wood. Inga was quick to send cards, write letters of encouragement to the sick or housebound and brought great joy to people. Age did not stop Inga ministering to the needs of others, despite her lack of mobility towards the end. Inga was a rare gem, enthusiastic, a woman of prayer, passionate and a blessing to people. She will be sadly missed, but a warm reception awaits her in heaven. As 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made our good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. So thank you to Reverend Kostakis Christalulu. <clears throat> now we've heard that uh, Inga was a member of the Healing on the Streets team. And I have a contribution from Pastor Doreen and others in the Healing on the Streets team, which I'm going to read out. And then uh, we will hear from Tope. So Pastor Doreen writes, it is sad news but we rejoice that Inga is welcomed into heaven as God's faithful servant. I remember her commitment to healing on the streets and saw her regularly on the streets to serve and always with her smile. She had such a gentle and compassionate spirit, which was an asset on the streets. She continued serving till the last few years when her health restricted her movements, but this did not stop her from continuing to pray for healing on the streets. My thoughts and prayers are with her immediate and church family. So blessings from Pastor Doreen. And we also have a few words from Andrew, who's now taking the lead on that team. So Andrew writes, thank you, Lord, that I had the privilege of serving with Inga on healing on the streets over the years. She was open about her faith. Thank you that God has taken her to be with him. May her family know the Lord's comfort at this time. Thank you, Andrew. And Janney writes, so sorry to hear Sister Inga, our great supporter in healing in the streets has passed away. In my memory, she was a very kind and loving person. I thank God for his faithful daughter who is with him now. She is in peace and joyful with the Lord. Thank you, Janney. And then we have uh, a message from uh, Franca. Glory be to God, our Father, who has taken our beloved sister to his glory, to be with him in his kingdom. Well done, Sister Inga. You have finally made it to heaven. Thank God. Brethren, Sister Inga has made heaven. Of this, I'm sure. We should rejoice, for she is with the Lord God, our Father, who made her. This is the main crux of the matter. We should continue to work hard to meet her there. We should not grieve as unbelievers or say her soul rests in peace. Her soul has rested 
in rest in her Lord God. Praise God. That is the desire of our hearts, that we all will go to heaven, a place prepared for us already. Praise God for what he has done. Sister Inga ended well in her old age. Praise be to our master, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Franca. And so we have condolences also expressed from Jane, from Sandra, from Steve, from Doreen Yap, and from um, uh, Siu Kin. So thank you all very much for sending your condolences, which we pass on now to Inga's family uh, and to the church. Thank you very much. And so I'm going to invite uh, Tope Pearson now to share uh, her tribute of Inga. Thank you, Sally. I'm going to first share a very short verse in the Bible from Acts chapter 9, verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Dear Inga, you have inspired me as a woman of God. I'm so grateful to God for your life and our friendship. I admire your strong spirit and zeal for the Lord demonstrated in your passion to serve him until the end. When I was coordinating Healing Women's Street for Edgware and District Churches, you were my inspiration not just because you were the eldest person on the team encouraging me, but because of your commitment and consistency until you, can, you couldn't stand on your feet. I especially remember the time when an Orthodox Jewish woman in the local community came up to us both on the street to ask for prayers and was frightened in case her husband found out. You happily welcomed this woman, who later became our friend, into your home, so the two of us could minister. It was not just your servant heart which touched me in them. I, was very I very much enjoyed our quality time together, as we regularly shared our lives over meals, and for your caring heart towards my son, Christian. I knew one day I would be missing you when the Lord calls you home, but I also celebrate your godly life on earth and the fact I will see you again in heaven. Rest well, my dear friend. Thank you very much, Tope. So I'm going to read now the article which Inga wrote uh, in September 2004 in answer to the question, how and why did I become a Christian? Uh, the answer was, it just made sense in a nutshell. Inga wrote, I was baptized as a baby, but it was only a matter of form, meaningless to all who took part in the ceremony. The reason I was baptized was to avoid the stigma of being Jewish, for I had Jewish blood in my veins. The year was 1930. Times were dangerous for anyone, even partly Jewish, in Central Europe. Hitler would soon make his arrogant, deadly presence felt. I was too young to understand what was happening, but as a little snub-nosed, pigtailed girl, I was left bewildered by the sudden change of attitude at school towards me. I was dirt, an outcast. They discovered that I was half Jewish. But our God is a God of love and grace, undeserved favor. And he stepped into this frightening situation. Jewish children in my class disappeared. 
my parents had heard of an English Christian organization that reached out to Jewish people. The Barbican Mission to the Jews, now merged with the Christian Witness to Israel, who were working to get Jewish or half-Jewish children away to the safety of England. It was a tough job, and in the end they rescued some 60 children. So it was that in January 1939, my sister and I landed in Croydon Airport in a little plane that could not fly from Prague to Croydon without first refueling in Holland. The next morning, we awoke in strange beds in a new country among new people. We were in a Christian children's home for Jewish youngsters. Now, I knew nothing about God, nothing about Jesus. The Holy Spirit was at work, but I knew nothing about him either. I was amongst Christian people who had reached out to us in compassion and learning the English language and learning about God went hand in hand. At first, I did not understand a word, but I loved our new experience of going to church strict prayer book services, of course. And those around me, I saw the reality of Jesus about whom I was now hearing. I grew to see the reality of God, a God who was utterly holy. Now I wasn't holy. That meant I was a sinner, unable to get close to a holy God. Jesus came to solve that problem to be our saviour. <clears throat> it was obvious. It all made sense. Only for me, there was something missing. I could find no assurance of salvation. And whilst in that state, the time came for us to return to our parents who had managed to come to England too, each carrying one suitcase, and had now set up home in North London. Every contact with anything spiritual stopped forthwith, except that God had given me Christian school friends and later Christian work colleagues and a deep realization of my need for Jesus to be my savior, which never left me. I was nearly 20 before I could get to church again and find their acceptance and Bible teaching. In due course, my vicar pointed me to 1 John 5, verse 12. He who has sent the Son has life. No perhaps or maybe, but has. And you have the Son by asking him to be your saviour. Utter assurance of salvation flooded my whole being. And I awoke next morning a new person with love, joy and peace overwhelming me and making everything different. I knew I belonged to Jesus now and for all eternity. God was still holy, but I was no longer shut out from him. I did not realize it then, but love, joy, peace are the fruits of the spirit. The Bible is true and its teaching is ours to experience. It transformed my life. And this was when I started writing. Later, when I discovered the gifts of the Holy Spirit were for us today, I invited the Holy Spirit to fill me. The first thing that happened was that Jesus became so real to me, like that Mary on the resurrection morning. I could say, I have seen the Lord. In due course, the Lord led me to Edgware, brought me again to an evangelical church where I would be nurtured, encouraged to grow, to take my place and play my part in this Christian family. The gospel still seems to make sense to me. It simply makes sense. It is based on fact and the historical person of Jesus. But it was through men and women with a love for Jewish children who reached out to me, gave me the Bible and taught me about the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of St. Peter, John and Paul, all Jews, who showed me that Jesus, 
showed me Jesus, that I found life. I am filled with gratitude. Inga Plitska. And this article, she did sign with her full name. A beautiful story, which I know she wanted everyone to hear today. And so as this particular part of the service of giving tribute draws to a close, it is appropriate that we have the reading which Inga chose from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21, which is Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, and it mirrors, Paul, uh, it mirrors Inga's prayer for all of us today. And so I will ask uh, Jenny Stora now to read this for us, after which we will sing again. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom the, his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we all ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Jenny. We are now going to stand wherever we are and sing All I Once Held Dear. Oh, 
We're now going to have our second reading, which is from Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 14, at which Margit is going to read for us. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so, somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Margit. Well, I know that Inga would not be happy with this service unless I preached the gospel to you. But she has made my job so much easier by choosing scripture readings and songs that speak of the hope that she had through knowing Jesus Christ as her Lord and Saviour. Inga knew what was important, faith in Christ, 
and the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith, as Paul wrote in his letter to the Philippians. She knew that believing in Jesus as son of God who died on the cross for her sins and for our sins and who rose again gives us the certainty of life with him, that death is not the end. She knew the power of the resurrection and she lived it out. As we heard in verse 10, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so attaining to the resurrection of the dead. Inga hungered for that deep knowledge of Christ, as Paul did. And her humility was evident in her life, as we have heard from the many wonderful tributes. Just as St. Paul is humble in his writing to the Philippians, not boasting of goals attained, but pressing on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called him and her heavenwards in Christ Jesus. In these uncertain times, with COVID-19 pandemic around the world, everyone is much more aware of their own mortality. And if you are not yet certain that you will be joining Inga in heaven when you die, then I urge you, don't leave it another day. Open your Bible. Read Mark's Gospel. See who Jesus really is. And then ask him to come into your life, acknowledging your sins and accepting that Jesus died for you. Then you too will receive the Holy Spirit that conquers fear and brings peace and hope for a future. A future in heaven with God for all eternity. That is what Inga knew. And that is what she wants you to know today. That the love of Jesus is available to everyone. We just have to ask him to come into our lives. And so I pray that you will act on that today if you haven't done so already. And for those of us who have already invited Jesus into our lives, we can rest assured that we will meet Inga again in heaven, as Mike alluded to, probably way up higher than us. But someone will be there to welcome us, who has a well-deserved place there before us. Amen. And so let's turn to prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, we praise you that you have made people to share life together and to reflect your glory in the world. We thank you now for Inga, for all that we saw of your goodness in her life and for all that she meant to each one of us. We thank you and praise you for the inspiration of her life of Christian faith and her service through healing on the streets through her encouragement and kindness to others through letter writing, her courage to speak the gospel and guide others through her written articles and her faithfulness to you. As we too journey towards death, may we do so in the company of Jesus, who came to share our life, that we might share the life of eternity. To him be glory with you and the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And so we bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread as we forgive, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are going to sing our final song, which uh, Inga chose, which is before the throne of God above. So I invite you to stand wherever you are, and the words will be on the screen for you to sing along with this. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord God, to trust you, not only for ourselves, but also for those whom we love and who are hidden from us by the shadow of death. That as we believe in your power to raise from the dead, so we may trust your love to give eternal life to all who believe in him through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. The hand of the Lord is gentle, and though we cannot understand, he comforts us 
with his gentle hand. The hand of the Lord is loving. And though it seems our hope is gone, his love brings strength to carry on. The hand of the Lord brings healing. And though our hearts are filled with pain, his healing hand brings peace again. And so may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. We're going to play out to a song which Inga chose called Loved with an Everlasting Love. And we're playing this from YouTube because it's not one that we know or can play, but it is a beautiful song which will appear on the screen and the subtitles will show you the words. So I invite you to spend a few moments in reflection as we listen to this song and then feel free to leave the meeting at any time. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who contributed today and has joined us. Love with everlasting love, led by grace that love to know, gracious be. Show.